Hello students, today we are in the last lecture of the chapter national income. Till now we have discussed a lot about national income like meaning of national income, national income at current prices, national income at constant prices, gross domestic production at factor cost, gross domestic production at market price, concept of per capita income, three methods for measuring national income etc. We analyzed that value added method considers the contribution of all industrial sectors to the addition of net value. Income method considers the income generated to all the factors of production in the form of rent, wages, interest and profit. Expenditure method considers the expenditure of both private sector and the government sector in the economy. Interesting point to note here is that all the three methods of measuring national income give the same amount of national income as all the three methods are interlinked. The income method is based on the output produced by the factors of production. The expenditure method is based upon the income method as our expenditure is dependent on income. Again. The product method is based upon the expenditure method because production is directly linked with the expenditure involved. Therefore, each method provides a check on the accuracy of the other methods. Whereas income method may be most suitable for developed economies where people properly file their income tax return. As a matter of fact, countries like India are unable to estimate their national income wholly by one method. Today we are starting with some more concepts of national income. First is net domestic product. While calculating gross domestic production, no provision is made for depreciation allowance. It reveals complete flow of goods and services through various sectors. When depreciation allowance is subtracted from gross domestic production, we get net domestic production. As we know, gross minus depreciation equals to net. Net domestic product equals to gross domestic product minus depreciation. Now what is gross national product? Gross net product is defined as the sum of the gross domestic product and net income from abroad. Gross net product equals to gross domestic product plus net income from abroad. Net income from abroad means Add all income earned by Indian residents abroad minus income earned by non-residents in India. As it usually happens that Indian residents go abroad to work. Indian banks are functioning abroad. Indians own property in foreign countries. The income from all these people is the factor income earned from abroad. Next term is net national product. Net national product is equal to net domestic product plus net foreign income from abroad. Next and last term is net national product at factor cost or national income. Net national product at factor cost or national income is defined as the sum of domestic factor incomes and net factor income from abroad. Actually for estimating national income, Central Statistics Officer has prescribed different methods for different sectors. For example, for agriculture sector, production method is followed. In sectors like electricity, transport, trade, public administration, etc., income method approach is followed. Now, what is national income accounting? It is a method of preparing and presenting national income accounts based on the principle of double accounting system of business accounting. National income accounting tries to summarize the performance of an economy by measuring national income aggregates in a year. There are two basic functions of national income accounting. First, to identify specific economic achievements of a country and second objective is on this basis, government frames its policies and programs to maximize the material welfare of the people. This is the concept of national income accounting. 
which enables us to understand and analyze and interpret the working of an economy. That is why the subject of macroeconomics begin with the chapter of national income. Estimation of the national income of a country is not an easy task. Appropriate and completely reliable data for accomplishing this work is not available even in developed countries. There are certain problems and difficulties in the estimation of national income. These problems can be classified into two categories, conceptual problems and statistical problems. Conceptual problems relate to definition of various terms like definition of output, identification of intermediate products, definition and identification of factor incomes etc. Most of the conceptual difficulties arise due to following reasons. Unorganized and non-monetized sector. The national income is estimated in terms of money value. But there are some economic activities that are non-monetary in nature. In agriculture sectors, most of the agricultural labors are paid part of the wages in kind. Now it is difficult to estimate their actual money wages. Similarly, the amount of food grains produced and consumed by the farmers are difficult to conceptualize. Second problem, under conceptual head is of classification into distinct industrial groups which is not an easy task. Next problem in estimating the national income is the classification of economy into clear and distinct industrial groups which is an essential requirement for the estimation of national income. But in India, classification of workers into distinct industrial groups is difficult particularly in agricultural sector. As we all know, agriculture is a seasonal occupation and most of the labor and marginal farmers migrate to cities and towns to earn their living during the off season. It is a problem whether to include their activity in the agriculture sector or in the non-agriculture sector. Besides, in rural India, a worker is engaged in a variety of activities. For example, the village cobbler or shoemaker hides the skin of the animals, tans it, dyes it, makes shoes, sells it in the village market and also repairs the shoes when they are broken. Hence, it is difficult to estimate his correct income into correct category. These were the conceptual problems. Now, some of the statistical problems in measuring national income. First among them is non-availability of data. In many leading sectors of Indian economy like agriculture and unregistered manufacturing units, producers do not keep any record of output and intermediate products used. Since it is not possible to conduct a sample survey in every such sector, the amount of guesswork is very high. For example, the gross value added by taxis and auto rickshaws is largely a guesswork and guesswork is only an estimation which may or may not be correct. Second problem in statistical head is gaps in statistical data. In order to estimate value added in production units, it is necessary to collect complete data regarding the various intermediate products and services used in the manufacture of the final product. But such complete data are not available in such subsector of the economy. The following problems also require particular mention. Presence of a large non-monetized sector, lack of appropriate and reliable data, problem of double counting, problem of transfer payments, difficulties in classification of working population, unreported illegal income. Now question is why we do national income accounting? Means what are the main uses of national income accounting? Is it useful to an economy? Yes, national income accounting indicates performance of the economy signifying economy's strength or its failures. National income accounting helps to find out structural changes. National income accounting reflects how national income is shared among various factors of production. In this context, it is especially trade unions in making rational analysis of remuneration that the labor is getting. 
नेशनल इनकम अकाउंटिंग हेल्प्स इन मेकिंग कंपेरिजन अमंग नेशंस इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ नेशनल इनकम एंड पर कैपिटा इनकम विच लीड अस टू मेक सुटेबल चेंजेस इन प्लान एंड अप्रोचेज टू अचीव रैपिड इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट नेशनल इनकम स्टेटिस्टिकल डेटा रिफ्लेक्ट दी स्पेसिफिक कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ इंडिविजुअल सेक्टर्स एंड देयर ग्रोथ ओवर टाइम नॉट ओनली दिस नेशनल इनकम अकाउंटिंग इज हेल्पफुल टू यूनाइटेड नेशंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस व्हिच फॉर्मुलेट्स वेलफेयर प्लान्स फॉर डिफरेंट कंट्रीज स्पेशली फॉर अंडर डेवलप्ड एंड डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज एंड मच मोर नेशनल इनकम अकाउंटिंग हैज सेवरल यूजेस फॉर इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी एंड रिसर्च students do you remember we use the term factor income and transfer payment somewhere now it is the time to understand the difference between the two where is factor income comprises of rent wages interest and profit on the same hand transfer payment includes gift subsidies donations scholarships etc second difference where is factor income is received in return for rendering productive services transfer payment is received without providing any good or service in return third difference factor income is an earned income on the other hand transfer income is an unearned income fourth difference factor income is a bilateral payment whereas transfer payment is unilateral payment fifth difference factor income is included in national income whereas transfer income is not included in national income students our chapter completes here I think now we should do few questions to test the knowledge of this chapter. Are you ready for it? Then let's start. First question: In which concept a base year price is taken for calculating national income? Options are national income at current prices, national income at constant prices, national income at market price, and national income at factor cost. Yes, the answer is. national income at constant prices because the question is in which concept a base year price is taken and we know we take base year price in national income at constant prices second question value of national income at market price and factor cost is same except inclusion and exclusion of two items and what are these two items first option is direct tax and indirect tax second option direct taxes and subsidies third option indirect taxes and subsidies fourth option indirect taxes and depreciation my question is what is the difference between gdp at factor cost and gdp at market price yes it is indirect taxes and subsidies that is third option because when we add indirect taxes and we subtract subsidies we get gdp at market price question number 3 is national income is the money value of all the goods and services produced in dash territory of a country option 1 economic territory option 2 domestic territory option c both of the above and option d none of the above yes it is domestic territory of a country that is option b question 4 what is the indicator of an economy's growth means how it is shown that economy is growing as per its gross domestic production as per its net domestic production as per increase in population as per increase in infrastructure means which among the four shows that economy is growing yes it is gross domestic production next question is transfer payments are those payments which are made first option which are made to workers on transfer from one shop to another second option transfer payments are those which are paid to workers as compensation option third transfer payments are those which are made without any exchange of goods and services and option four transfer payments are made for making imports and export yes students it is none other than it is option c because transfer payments are made without any exchange of goods and services as we have earlier said transfer payments are unilateral payment question number 6 which of the following is an economic activity 
ऑप्शन वन लिसनिंग टू द म्यूजिक ऑन द रेडियो ऑप्शन टू टीचिंग वंस ओन सन एट होम ऑप्शन सी मेडिकल फैसिलिटीज रेंडर्ड बाय अ चैरिटेबल डिस्पेंसरी एंड ऑप्शन फोर अ हाउस वाइफ डूइंग हाउस होल्ड ड्यूटीज विच अमंग द फोर इज एन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी येस इट इज अगेन सी मेडिकल फैसिलिटीज रेंडर्ड बाय अ चैरिटेबल डिस्पेंसरी एज ऑप्शन ए सेज लिसनिंग टू द म्यूजिक ऑन द रेडियो इट इज नॉट एन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी सेकेंड इज टीचिंग ओन सन एट होम इट इज ऑल्सो नॉट इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी एंड ऑप्शन डी इज अ हाउस वाइफ डूइंग हाउस होल्ड ड्यूटीज इट इज नॉट एन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी आर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज डिमांड फॉर फाइनल कंजम्पन एराइज इन फर्स्ट ऑप्शन हाउस होल्ड सेक्टर ओनली सेकेंड ऑप्शन गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर ओनली थर्ड ऑप्शन बोथ हाउस होल्ड एंड गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर्स फोर्थ ऑप्शन नाइदर ऑफ द अब सेक्टर्स येस इट इज बोथ सेक्टर्स सी डिमांड फॉर फाइनल कंजम्पन एराइज इन बोथ सेक्टर्स वी ऑल्सो डिमांड फॉर फाइनल गुड्स एज वी आर हाउस होल्ड एंड गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर ऑल्सो डिमांड फॉर फाइनल गुड्स सो वी एंड हेयर विद दीज क्वेश्चन होपिंग अ बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑन योर पार्ट थैंक यू Thank you.